we're going to be looking at work done and power. Energy is related to the capacity to do work. So when work is being done, energy is being transformed. The definition of work done is given by this equation. So it is the force multiplied by the distance moved in the direction of the force. So in this case, we have a bicycle and we're applying a force F to the right. And the bicycle moves a distance S to the right. So this distance is in the same direction as the force F. So the work done is equal to F times S. The unit of work done is the joule. And you need to know the definition of the joule. And it comes from the definition of work done. So it is equal to, so one joule is equal to the unit of force, which is the newton, times by the unit of the distance moved, which is in metres. So one joule equals one newton metre. So one joule is the work done when a force of one newton moves its point of application through a distance of one metre in the direction of the force. In this case, we have a force F being applied along the handle of the lawnmower, but this force F is making an angle of theta relative to the horizontal. And the lawnmower is moving a distance S in the horizontal direction. So is the work done equal to the force F times the distance moved S? Well, no, because remember from our definition of work done, S is the distance moved in the direction of the force. And the force F is not in the same direction as the distance moved S. However, you may say, well, it's not moving in the direction of the force. It's not moving in this direction. So does that mean there's no work done? Well, no, that's incorrect as well. So what is the work done? Well, the work being done is due to the component of the force that is in the same direction as the distance moved. And as the distance moved is in the horizontal direction, the component of the force that is doing the work is the hor its horizontal component. The vertical component of the force is not producing any work done, and that's because there's no distance being moved in the vertical direction. So we can say then the work done is the horizontal component of the force times this distance S. To resolve force F to get the horizontal component, well, the horizontal component is adjacent to the angle and force F is hypotenuse. So that means we need to use the cos term. So our cos theta is equal to the adjacent divided by the hypotenuse. So it's a horizontal component of H divided by F. So FH equals F cos theta. And if we substitute that into the equation for work done, we can say that work done equals F cos theta times S. Power. Power is the rate at which work is done. And if you remember, we said when work is done, energy is being transformed. So you can also define power as the rate at which energy is transformed. If you remember, rate means per unit time. So we can also say work done per unit time equals our power. So from our definition of power, we can get an equation, which is then power is equal to work done divided by time taken. And in symbols, we can express it as P equals W divided by T. The units of power is a watt. And you need to know the definition of one watt. And that comes from the definition of power. So one watt is equal to the units of work done, which is joules, divided by the units of time, which is in seconds. And so one watt equals one joule per second. So one watt is the power when one joule of work is done per second. If we look at the power for this car, 
which is moving at a constant velocity. So you've got the motive force that is driving the car forward. And because it's moving at a constant velocity, the resultant force is zero. So there is a drag force in the opposite direction, which is equaling the motive force. So yes, the resultant force is zero, but power is being expended because work is being done by the motive force for the car to move forward. So the work done on the car is equal to the motive force F times the distance moved in the direction of that force. And if we are to substitute the equation for work done into the equation for power, that will give us the power equals F times S divided by T. So because the car is moving at a constant velocity, we can say velocity is equal to the rate of change of displacement or the change in displacement per unit time. So our change in displacement would be the distance moved in the direction of the force. So we could say our velocity is equal to S divided by T. So for our equation for power, we can replace S divided by T with V. So we can say the motive power is equal to our motive force F times by the velocity. So just a reminder that F is not the resultant force, which in this case is zero, but F is the motive force that is doing the work to overcome the drag force to move the car forward at a constant velocity.